lock your doors, hold tight your crucifix, and hang up the garlic for tonight. Van does Halloween. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my Halloween episode of Dan Does. You know what I've noticed? Maybe you have as well. Pumpkins aren't scary, are they? Really? I mean, they're silly, if anything. So uh, I want to make a scary pumpkin. That's the video. Happy Halloween. <laughs> welcome, everybody, to my first ever Halloween episode. This one is about a pumpkin. Now, this pumpkin is far too small. I bought this and then changed my mind, so we're going to summon a larger pumpkin. Well, now that was easier than paying £8 for the larger pumpkin. First tool of the night is Handyman's Murder Weapon. I'm going to use this to cut the front of the uh, the pumpkin off. It is hollow inside, which is a pain. I was hoping for polystyrene, but couldn't find anything. If it was any other time of year, I would say, please be careful when using this tool. But it is Halloween, so I won't say it. I'm assuming you've all seen the thumbnail. Otherwise you wouldn't have clicked this video, but what I'm going to do is make a pumpkin that's scary and for this I need to remove its lovely smooth face. And throughout this video we'll reveal its true horrific face. Well at least that's the intention. Now this next step is the step that took forever. I have to fill this pumpkin up to give it substance. We can't just have a big vacuous void there in the middle. So I'm going to uh, fill it up with this Gorilla Expanding Foam stuff. It was £2 in the pound shop. And you know that when you spend £2 on something in a pound shop that you're getting quality. Mmm, that looks bloody delicious. Oh, I'll be honest with you. Now, I just wanted to see how much this foam expanded over a half hour period. And the answer was not very much, so I bought two cans uh, and just filled this pumpkin up and uh, hope for the best. I mean, this was quite fun at the time, just spraying this crap into this pumpkin. But it took a long time to dry. I'm talking overnight, and then some. And then eventually it looked like this monstrosity. But you do get some great textures out of it. Look at that thing. It's like a giant marshmallow. Oh, I mean, it's not really what I was going for, but this, this thing that sprouted out the side... I definitely can use this for something. I mean, I don't use it on this video. This is future Dan telling you that um, I don't use it in this video, but you could definitely use this for something. I mean, it looks like intestines. Now I need to start carving this mother up with the handyman's weapon of choice there, to start hacking away at the thing. It is the season for hacking away at things. Halloween. Um, I'm just ripping it, ripping pieces off, ripping chunks off. We can't really go wrong. Uh, have fun with it. Have fun hacking and slashing and tearing and shredding and all the wonderful joys of the Halloween season. Enjoy, kids. Now, if you're anything like me, you might want to send the pumpkins in to the pumpkins' loved ones for a joke. Uh, but once you've done that, then you should have a nicely hollowed out pumpkin there, ready, uh, ready to work on. 
old school. We're going to do some paper mache with some wood glue and some toilet roll. And uh, uh, some water. Mix it all up in a bowl. You know how to do it. Kids were doing this when they had, uh, before computer games, this was their, uh, their fun. This is what they did for fun. This and uh, card games. And I'm not talking about Pokemon cards. I'm talking about the boring, you know, cards that your nan might play solitaire with. I'm going to be honest with you all today. Halloween is the season for honesty. Probably. Um, I, I added too much water to this, so it took an eternity to dry. So in future, if you do this, or paper mache, use more glue, a lot less water. Get that tissue lovely and moist, squish it in your hands, and then just start slapping it on. Squishing it all into the areas that you uh, that you desire. I mean, I wanted it mainly around the edge of the 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 hole to fill in the gaps there, so it's flush. Uh, but I covered the entire thing with the white pulp. I also pressed in a little dent there for where the pumpkin's mouth and eyes will be. I'd just like to take a moment to thank the patrons. Thank you so much to Ed Trumps. Gemma Ingram, Jake Langford, Carl Buckley, Miranda Stone, and Shy Talk. Also, I'd like to thank Andy Scott, Anthony Roberts, Benedict Mueller, Brando B, Cathal Grant, Chris Gilliard, Demon Mittenhands, Gerd Gervins from Dark Matter Workshop, Goat Harassa, Carl Deakin, Krista, Larry, Mary Peterson, Mike Pitt, Positive Puppet, Pubesbury McFundleman, Rabies of Loud, Rich Miles, and Stuart Ashen. And a big thank you to the rest of you. If you would like to help support this channel, then please consider visiting Patreon. The link is in the input. Thank you very much. Happy Halloween! Uh, next. I'm going to use these foam beads, uh, some toilet roll or tissue paper, and some Halloween cobwebs. Always handy to, to have Halloween cobwebs in your crafting collection. Buy as much as you can every year and save them. That's my advice to you. With the tissue paper I'm just doing a single layer over the top of the whole thing, which is very fiddly, might I add, just to smooth it out a little. And then, using the PVA glue and foam beads, I'm going to uh, sprinkle those sporadically, just in random places. Also, quite fiddly, these foam beads don't really want to stick, especially not with wood glue, it takes a little while, but stick at it. Uh, and then, I'm going to use the cobwebs to add a nice sort of um, tendon texture muscle-like texture to the entire face which was also very fiddly it's uh, just generally a fiddly project uh, but it's halloween eh and i'm desperate to scare those trick-or-treaters also uh, might i add that you can't really go wrong as long as everything is snapped down it's fine and it's fun and then just to make sure we seal the entire thing in, I'm going to use a mixture of black paint and Mod Podge to seal the entire thing in. And once that thing is sealed in, oh, the relief that that stuff is fixed and it's not coming out. It truly is a wonderful feeling. This black void needs some features. So I'm going to make eyeballs now using this round polystyrene ball. If you're as handy with a knife as I am, then you should also be able to cut this polystyrene ball in half in one swift motion. With the two halves placed neatly on the table there, to an annoying psycho sound effect that you're probably going to get sick of, I'm going to take a, a ball stick and press into the top of each. Uh, not too hard, you don't want to break the things, but just to make a small indentation. 
to keep the shape of the indentation in the polystyrene ball, I'm going to use some matte Mod Podge. I have gloss and matte, I chose matte. Um, I think because I'm going to paint the thing, so it's the best surface. But get that covered, wait for that to dry, and then we can get on to detailing the eyeballs. Uh, these are the five colours I used. I will uh, tell you the names of the colours as we use them. The first, apparently, is a Luftwaffe Uniform. That's the colour, Luftwaffe Uniform. Um, which is kind of like a dark grey blue. Use this as a base coat for the iris. As neat as we can be, people. Next up, we've got Andrea Blue. I'm going to use this one to add a bit of... Uh, the eyeballs tend to have a sort of a, a, a sort of fibre, fibrous, if that's the word, look to them. So I'm using this and brushing outwards in the direction of where the fibres are. Third degree next. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the Andrea Blue, just uh, less of it. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing this whole process while the previous layer is still wet to, to get to wet blend, I suppose. Uh, next, the colour of my soul, black. It's not really. I'm actually quite a nice person, but it's Halloween. Can use this to paint the uh, the pupil. Now, I'm sure painting eyes can be quite intimidating to some, but it's quite easy. And if you do struggle, then please look at a photograph, or better still, your own eyes for inspiration. <laughs> It's uh, the way we paint anything, or the way we should paint anything, is by looking at real things. I'm searching my little set of drawers here, just having a little look. Um, um, yeah. Cavachons, that's what we need. We need uh, cavachons. Two little glass half beads. Uh, one for each eye, and I use UV resin to place those on top of the eyeballs. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I f didn't film that process. I had to go back and film the cabochons. Uh, uh, so you're welcome. I also didn't record painting a little bit of old rose around the base of the eyeball there, just to make it a bit pink. Now on to Dark Matter Workshop's uh, famous vein technique, using red wool that I purchased from a charity shop. And we're going to de uh, deconstruct this wall into its very fibres. Take this wall apart, rip it to pieces. Get the odd few strands and then using watered down wood glue, um, paste those to the side of the eyeballs. As veins. And it looks great. Thank you very much, Gert. You will have the odd few hairs uh, that are strayed. So just take a lighter and just very quickly um, brush the flame across them to get rid of the tiny strands. But remember it's polystyrene. I did accidentally melt a little bit of it, but it's fine. It's fine. It's Halloween! This is Milliput, a two-part epoxy putty that has been sitting in my drawer for years. I do hope it works. Future Dan here, it does work. Epoxy putty is in two parts, you're supposed to mix both parts together and both parts are supposed to be equal. I mean, I'm just torn at the thing and use my own judgement. Uh, but you really should use a knife. I just didn't have a knife to hand. Uh, in all honesty, I couldn't find one uh, because I've been uh, using them up on people. <laughs> uh, do you get it? It's like Halloween, so everything's got a slight sinister twist to it. Uh, try my best. Uh, first use the putty to stick the eyes to the face and then using tiny little sausages. What's the Halloween equivalent of a sausage? Blood sausage uh, or black pudding, uh, which is actually delicious. And I know a lot of you from overseas will find the idea of congealed pig's blood uh, stuffed into a casing. Uh, disgusting, but it's not. It's lovely. Uh, and it's, it's seasoned. So it takes away the edge of it being congealed blood. Kill me. Uh, now on to a staple of this channel, it seems. Translucent white Fimo clay. I'm going to use this to make teeth. Uh, human teeth this time. I've not done that yet. 
these are going to be human shaped teeth human shaped and human sized six teeth on the top six on the bottom 12 teeth and all just like a real human uh, and if your dentist tells you you're supposed to have more don't believe them it's a, it's a money-making scheme all right I've had to mix up more milliput because I made far too much before and it dried out which happens so I've made more and uh, using that as gums and pressing the teeth into the gums if you if you're no stranger to this channel you would have seen this technique before but because there's only 12 teeth I'm gonna press the teeth in take them out one by one and remember where each of these teeth go at least that's what I say now future Dan will tell you that he forgot where they were supposed to go and uh, winged it out comes the pointy rubbery silicone thing I'm gonna use that to uh, press in between the teeth and the gums to give it a natural gum look and then I'm going to use the skinny devil beak to remove the teeth one by one those of a sensitive disposition turn away now but keep the video running please Hello, Mola. No, I haven't got any teeth spare, I'm afraid. I've used them all. Make an offering. Oh, you're deaf, Mola. I just said I haven't got any teeth. Please. I'm not made of teeth, Mola. So would you mind pissing off? How dare you defy Mola? You will pay for this, you befettered bag of meat. You will rule the day that you cross Mola, you fuck up. I'll have all the teeth I need. Right. Watch your wooden bloody mouth, Mola. One more word from you, Mola, and I'll have you in the nearest elderly person's home. And do you know what they'll do? They'll put you on your they're on their coffee table, and they'll fill you up with safety pins and coupons and half-sucked sweets. You want to be full of half-sucked sweets? Keep your bloody mouth shut. Sorry. Yeah, that's right, bitch. I didn't waste the milliput this time. The spare milliput from the gums I used to uh, add a bit more detail to the stalk. So it was a very basic plastic stalk. And then to add even more detail, I used this Hitler's moustache to uh, scratch in some wood textures. And uh, I don't show it in this video, but just like clay, you can use isopropyl alcohol to smooth the, the scratches and the cuts and things. Smooth them all out. Make them look nice. I use a cheap red and brown acrylic to mix a, a bloody type colour to do the base coat on the uh, on the face. And I don't know about you, but I cannot wait for that milliput colour to disappear. Much better. I mean, it's starting to look horrific. Kill me. Now we're going to get old Rose in. Good old Rose. Good old, old Rose. How you been, old Rose? Going to use this for some highlights, uh, mainly on the gums. Oh, oh you're on your own now, Rose. Old Violet's gone. It's just you now and the cats. Oh, I do miss you, Vi, although you are a right cow sometimes. Oh. Rose. Rose. Rose, it's me. It's me, Vi. Oh my god, Vi, is that you? I can't see you. What are you? A, are you a ghost? Where are you? Can you show yourself to me? I missed you. I miss you so much, Vi. Show yourself. Get your hair on, Vi. Bloody hell. Give me a chance. Right, it's not easy, you know. Oh, you're still fat as a ghost. Did you know that? Hello. Hello, Rose. How are you? 
Look at me. Oh my goodness, look at you, Vi. You're a spirit or a ghost. What's it like being dead? Well, remember when we went to that neck of bingo in Daddy? It's a bit like that. Lots of old people, and it's really crap. Uh, you, you do get to sleep with I slept with Winston Churchill. If you can believe it, Rose. You remember, I used to tell you how much I wanted to sleep with that Winston Churchill. He's a right dish. But at least I thought he were, till I got his clothes off. Oh. So why are you here? Why? Why have you come back? It's not bad news, is it? Oh, I can't take any more bad news, I tell you that. No, Rose, it's not bad news. It's the night of Halloween. And us ghosts can come back for one night when it's Halloween for about 90 seconds. And I've come here to tell you, kill yourself. Because it's great here in ghost land. Kill myself? I I don't want to kill myself, Fi. I've got too much to live for. What you got to bloody live for, Rose? Bloody Eurovision? England ain't ever gonna win it, Rose. Come with me to the nether realm. Come on. I will not, Fi. Life is precious. I will not do it. Bloody do it, you idiot. Come on. Jump me from that bus. Quick! Did you just come back here on Halloween night to try and get me to kill myself, Vi? It's just like you. Typical Vi, trying to get me to kill myself, even when she's dead. Aye, it should have been you, Rose. You should be the one here, not me. And you know who I saw walking around? Sandy Yellow, you know, your husband. The one who died ten years ago. I've seen him walking about. He always fancied me, Rose, and I'm going to seduce the crap out of him. So you enjoy the rest of your life. I'm gonna go back to the Netherland and sleep with Winston Churchill and Sandy. If he'll have me. Of course he'll have me. He always wanted me. Oh, I hope you have a crap life, Rose. It should have been you. It should have been you. It should have been you. You cow. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, of the strange things that you've been seeing will not make much sense, uh, but it's kind of part of the channel lore. If you want to go back and watch the other um, episodes, hey, I'd be eternally grateful. Thank you. So anyway, back to the video. I'm wet blending some old rows into the red, using a lot of water and stuff, and then using a bit of the old rows to highlight certain areas. I'm not here to teach you to suck eggs. This is uh, usually my favourite part when I get to put the teeth in to the painted model. So in they go, one at a time, held in place with super glue. Now, when I took the teeth out, I swore to myself I would remember their placements. I didn't. This was a bit of a faff, which is English for mess. But, but, but I got it done, eventually. My, oh my, that is a lovely set of pearly whites you got there. No, you're not even finished. Next, time to paint that annoying white outer casing of the pumpkin. Um, they did not have orange ones in stock when I bought this thing. So I bought the white one thinking I'll paint it. Now I'm going to paint the entire thing orange, like a pumpkin. But I did forget to sand it, which is a real pain in the bottom. Because the paint kept coming off. But I'll find a solution to that later on. But this step should not have been needed. Sand everything. Sand your family. Sand your dinner. Sand your car. Everything. Everything needs to be sanded. Couldn't decide if I should paint the stalk green or brown. So I painted it green brown. There's always a middle ground. And once that was done the teeth were too white. Uh, There's a bit too much of a Hollywood smile there Mr Pumpkin. We're just going to dirty those up for you a little bit of a flesh wash and an umber wash. And then use a, a little cotton bud to uh, wipe away the uh, the ends of the teeth, just to give it whiter points on the teeth there. Now that's less Hollywood smile, more stereotypical British smile, which isn't true. 
rest of the world, our teeth do not look like that. All right? Everybody I know has got decent... Well, I mean, there's a few bad sets of teeth out there, but I'm sure it's the same everywhere. Sand yellow. Now, I'm going to use this to... Um, I want this pumpkin to be meaty in the centre, but still have a bit of the pumpkin pulp around the edge. So I'm using this along the edge of the, uh, of the face hole. Uh, and then wet blending it. Blending it in. A lot of wet blending in this episode. And once that's done, out comes Mr. Cottonbud. Should we give him his own little name up on the screen? We'll do that. We'll, we'll put his name up on the screen. Thanks, Mr. Cottonbud. Soaking up the excess there. Now, my goal was to make a scary pumpkin. Uh, and I thought that this, you know, just a blank expression, big eyes, teeth, flesh, gore, would be scary. I sent a photograph of this to my brother, Bill Making Stuff, and he said, ha ha, it's funny. And uh, he's right. I mean, look at it. Uh, this is when the realism starts to kick in. I'm going to add a flesh wash over pretty much the entire thing to, to marry all the colours together. And also run that brush up and down the seams just to give it a bit more depth there. Uh, now I told you the paint kept chipping off. That's why I took it outside into the fancy shed in the garden and gave it a spray with some clear varnish from the pound shop. Uh, it says it's matte. It's not. Uh, Mr. Ugly Pumpkin was missing something, just a little touch of colour, so I decided um, maggots. Let's make some maggots. And I did that using this beige Fimo that was um, bought for me by one of my patrons. Um, it was very kind of them, thank you. Take out your gnome spear. I know you've got one. We're going to use this to make uh, dents along the, the sausage rolling the clay with the gnome spear to give it ridges all the way along. Uh, you know what maggots look like. And after a long process of doing that, uh, took out the arch shiv and cut the, uh, the long worm looking thing into smaller baby worms, otherwise known as maggots. Maggots aren't baby worms, just in case you thought I was stupid. Once they're cut, give these baby worms a little squeeze on the ends, each end, to a point, or to a rounded point, doesn't need to be too pointy, and there's your maggot. <laughs> Last thing we need to do is bake them, and then give them a wash uh, with a flesh wash. And uh, they look pretty good to me. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm about ready to go fishing. Uh, not really. I have a crippling fear of hooks. Ever since I watched Hellraiser as a child. This next part was uh, very fun. Using this cheap ass super glue from the pound shop. Uh, gluing these maggots into random spots on the uh, on the meat pumpkin. Should we call him meat pumpkin? Now I did cover it in resin, uh, red resin, yellow resin, and mixed inks and things. But I'm saving that for the showcase. And before we get to the end, um, please consider subscribing. You can join Patreon if you want to be incredibly generous. And thank you very much for watching. There are other videos to watch. Enjoy the showcase.
kill me? No, you took too long to make. Um, here he is. Here's uh, I don't know what we're going to call him. Meat pumpkin. That'll do. Um, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go pop this out on the windowsill now. Ready for the trick-or-treaters on Halloween. Uh, I'd like to get some of their reactions, but unfortunately you're not allowed to film strangers' kits. Uh, thank you very much to my patrons. Thank you very much to you for watching. Have a happy Halloween. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all that stuff. Say goodbye. Uh, say goodnight. Meet, meet face. Kill me! No. I won't. Been enough death.